back to the vlog. I'm really excited to say that this week I'm spending um, the Tour of Britain with Team Wiggins. I started yesterday in stage three in Bristol and I'll be traveling with the team right up until stage eight in London. Earlier in the week, uh, Mark Daly, we have uh, James uh, Boucher from New Zealand, uh, Tom Pickock from Great Britain, and I've already mentioned Matthew Tucker. Unfortunately, uh, Joey Walker, the sixth member of the team, uh, had to uh, exit the race at stage two where he was involved. As most of you might know, the Tour Britain is a hugely important race for any team, but especially a Conti team like Team Wiggins. Firstly, it gives the riders the opportunity to step up and prove what they're made of against the world's best riders and the World Tour teams. So, so Tom, stage four. Aye. Top 20 on GC. Yeah, well, 20. 20, yeah. 20, yeah. still top 20. Um, what do you make of today? Hopefully it'll be slow and easy. <laughs> yep, stage four, none eaten to Royal Leamington Spa. Uh, plan for us today is to try and put a few more points to the tally of the red jersey with Matt Taggart um, and then cover the moves and if it comes back for a bunch sprint then obviously behind Gabs and Tom we just see who's feeling the best. Um, I think it's it's not very, uh, I don't think it's very hilly today. I think uh, and it'll end up in a bunch sprint, you know. There'll be a break or go and then they'll pull it back, hopefully. I'm just going to sit in and see what you can do at the end. Yeah, sit in and then try and give his Gabs a lead out at the end. No, I did a bit too much yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, But it's yeah. good, to, good to see you off the front in the final few Ks. Yeah, well, yeah. Do what, do whatever I, uh, comes into my head. It didn't do any harm, really. Absolutely. At this point of the race, stage four, Gabs Kulluk had already scored a top four placing on stage one and Tom Pickock was on top 20 on GC. The 183 kilometer stage was made up of a fairly hilly day with three King of the Mountain points and three three sprint points, which would be crucial for Matthew Teggett, who is in red in the sprints leader's jersey. Stage one was a good one for you. Yeah. How do you feel about today? Uh, yeah, pretty confident. Obviously that uh, first day was um, yeah, I was kind of pleasantly surprised. I knew I had good speed, um, so uh, but that was just yeah, that was just a kind of confirmation that I can you know do it against these big lads. So yeah, I'm super confident for today. I reckon I can you know stick it to them. Have a good have a good uh, good crack at it. It's a pretty technical finish, but I reckon if I choose the right wheels and you know surf surf amongst it, I might should be able to pull out a good result. So see what happens. Looking good and red. How's Thank it you. feel? Feels pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Through a written leg, it doesn't get much bigger to be on the podium. Like hey, yesterday, podium with Alan Philippe, Tony Martin, these kind of guys, so pretty surreal like. So I'm making the most of it. Absolutely, I think you can hold on for it for another another day or two? Uh, not so sure to be honest, it's going to be tough. I'm struggling a bit with um, some injury problems, so I'm trying to put on a brave face and fight through it. But um, yeah, we'll see. I'll take every opportunity I get. Like. For this stage, I was going to be sat in the Team Wiggins team car next to Simon Cope, the team's director for team. As neutral is 15 minutes long, so probably in around 7, 8k. The aim of that stage in particular was to get someone up the road in the breakaway and try and defend as many sprint points as possible. Um, come on, let's try and get someone in this, these moves that are going. 32 seconds. Okay, Moses is in this move. Uh, if it stays away and obviously he takes points, he'll probably leapfrog you, Matt. Unfortunately, the boys missed the move, which meant that they had to sit back and hope that the guys who had scored points previously in that competition didn't score again, or at least the points that were available were spread out amongst the riders who had escaped. Yeah. 
Give us one to sling off of. Agile. Do you want yep. more? Very bad. Something you don't see every day is four-time Tour de France winner Chris Room coming back through the race convoy to collect bottles and just be a team player. So we're about an hour into this one. Uh, the first the first hour was run off at 45k an hour. There's a break of six and we've uh, Tim Wiggins didn't get anyone in it. We got the numbers of that sprint, I didn't get them. Uh, we were third. Yep. Patton was second. Yep. Did Moses win it? Who else is up there? Moses. Moses did score up there. The other British lad scored up there. Alright, that's alright for us. So we're taking in the sprinter's red iceberg jersey and uh, a breakaway of six up the road. It's just hoping that the guys don't uh, win the rest of the sprints and overtake him in that competition. At the moment, we're two sprints in and Matthew's still got his lead. Gaps come down to 155. The final King of the Mountains point of the day, Burton Desert Hill was totally rammed with people and it was amazing to see so many people turn out. Yeah, everyone around him just giving them a round house and yeah. just jumping them and he's gone around a bit. Inside 15 kilometers to go, the six leaders of the breakaway have turned into four, and it's all splintering up front. The gap's now under 30 seconds, and it looks like it's going to come together for a bunch of print. Let's see how Tom and Gabs can do in the running. It was Andre Greipel who got the better of the bunch with Sasha Modlo in second and Gabs Color scoring another top 10 result. Tried to get in the break this morning. Right, yeah, I was uh, first to attack off the gun and then followed a few other moves, but then chain dropped just before a little chicane, and that's when the break went. And um, yeah, I was pretty disappointed that the rest of the time, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Gabs, another strong result and a finish. Talk us through it. Uh, yeah, so the lads kind of last 30k did a really good job. Just. You know, keeping me out of the wind, keeping me well positioned. Um, we knew, knew the finish would be pretty carnage, um, so we kept kind of up there. And then 5k to go, we were kind of trapped behind this guy, realised that they weren't interested, so we had to get around them. Um, jumped onto Gripal's wheel, was fighting like a few others off. Um, and he only had one man, and then Quick Step came up, so I jumped on them. Went into that last corner, um, 300 metres to go, probably too far back. Um, so yeah, it was just, uh, it's always going to be a bit of a gamble, a bit of a lottery with that, that type of finish. Um, so yeah, I think I was 10th in the end. Can't be, it's not too bad, but um, yeah, I still feel like I've got more in the tank. So on to the next sprint. So. Awesome, brilliant. <laughs> So it looks like unfortunately Tegger lost the, um, the sprint jersey today on countback, he's drawn on points but the 
because he's lower further down on GC, he's lost the jersey. We've now got a 300 kilometer um, journey to our next hotel. So stage, stage four, how did it go down? Good result. Gabs uh, sprinted to 10th, which is uh, in a hectic finish was a great result. Um, had a good lead out by the team. And so got a bit messy in the end, but uh, can be happy with 10th. A little bit disappointed with Matt losing the sprint's jersey, tied with Matt Holmes. It's great to be back behind the scenes at a big race like this again. You really get a good idea of how the World Tour guys race these kind of races. Today's stage, stage four was run at a fairly sedate pace with the breakaway of six going and getting no more than a two minute gap. Um, compare that to yesterday where the whole stage was basically strung out from the get go um, and the two stages couldn't have been raced any differently. All right, mate. The, the glamorous here. life of a Tour of Britain. Oh, lad. Right there. Yeah. Taggart was sleeping, so he, he obviously has a glamorous life. I, I don't have that comfort of sleeping in the car, but <laughs> made good things to set, set stuff on his nose. Yeah. So we've arrived up here in the Lake District where we'll be staying in this hotel for stages five and six tomorrow and the next day. Um, Team BMC are here, so I guess we're we're in good company, but I'm gonna go and grab some dinner because I'm absolutely starving. That transfer was over three hours, as you can tell by the fact that it's now dark. Anyway, for now, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.